Hey everybody and welcome to episode number 41 of the Kickabout with me, Chris, and as always, Dan and Fran are with us. Hello. Hi, uh, um, so we've got a couple of bits and pieces to cover first. Um, so obviously the Premier League has finished last week, as we all know. We've got a sort of end of season wrap up stuff to go through tonight, um, and also to take a look back on the the two European finals that happened last week and over the weekend. Um, but we've also got a YouTube channel coming, guys. Whee! Woo! Um, so yeah, we decided that one of the things we want to do going into next season was um, obviously try and reach more people. And one of the ways we want to try and do that is via YouTube. So all the podcasts are going to be made available on YouTube at some point this week over the next few days. Um, you're also going to see other videos on there, including the forfeit that's coming tonight. <laughs> um so that will go on there and we're also planning one or two other um, videos as well things like old school LMA manager videos or it might be me and Dan hitting the field and making asses of ourselves trying to complete challenges anything along those lines um, so yeah I will, I'll post obviously all the details on social media as and when um, we've also extended the competition by a week so um, me being rubbish again um, I haven't really posted a huge amount about the competition so I decided to extend it by a week so that I can flood social media a bit more and get a bit more interest going on it we've had, we've had some entries not not huge amounts but I just want to make sure that everyone's had an opportunity to do it um, so we will do that draw next week right um, so as always um, we are going to start uh, with this Damn the stat, man! All right, so obviously we had the Champions League final at the weekend, um, which was an interesting affair. City obviously came out losers, which was pretty unexpected. Um, and my stat is, obviously City became the ninth different English team to reach a European Cup slash Champions League final. But can you name the other eight? Oh, wow. Good God. I reckon I might be able to do that, to be fair. I reckon you could get close. Uh, would you say English or English? Like, English? Okay, yeah. so we're not including like... And sc- not just like... winners, just finalists. Okay. Oh, okay, that might be... No, no, I reckon I, reckon I could do the majority of them. Um, right, okay, well, as we're talking about Champions League final, that is where we are going to start. So I only went and did it again. Yeah, yeah. What did you, what did you guys think? I mean, it, it was... It was almost like a bit like Groundhog Day, wasn't it, watching that game? Because Chelsea set up the exact same way that they did in the previous two games in the FA Cup semi-final mm. and in the... Um, uh, what was the other game? In the Premier League game. Yeah. Um, and it was the same thing again, Man City seemed powerless to do anything. Yeah. I thought going into it, Chelsea were last couple of weeks had been in sort of poor form and City had obviously been resting up all their players. I thought it was pretty much a done done deal I thought City would walk away with it quite easily but I was actually really disappointed in City in the end yeah I've always felt I don't know how you guys feel but I've always felt like there's this aura of invincibility about Man City mm. and I don't know if it's been created by the media and and, so, and social media as well but every time Man City go into a game it almost feels like that there's nothing else this game is going to be other than a Man City win mm. Mm. and every time they don't win and they and they perform you know by their own standards poorly I don't know what it is. It just seems really surprising. And yet, I don't know why that is because Chelsea on their own terms are an equally good side. Yeah. Um, I think it's just because you look at City's just, squad. Their line, yeah. You Seven look at players. their squad and you just think there's literally no weaknesses other than the fact that they haven't, well, I said they haven't got a recognised striker. They had Aguero and Jesus. It's not as if they didn't have them. They were both there. They just didn't use them. But then you look at Chelsea's squad and although, you know, it's not a weak squad by any means, I mean, most of their players would walk into any top team but it's just, you know, you've got the likes of Thiago Silva is 36. Still a great player, but you sort of look at that and then you've got Ruben Diaz, who's come in and been outstanding. Yeah. I mean, Thiago Silva's come in and done a good job. I did, I must admit, I did like the um, the fact that there was a picture posted on social media of him a year ago, because obviously he was at PSG under mm. Tuchel when they lost to Bayern Munich, wasn't it, last season? In the Champions League final, was it Bayern Munich? I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and obviously embracing Tuchel because they'd lost and they were mm. upset, and then it was the, almost the exact same photo this year, embracing him because they'd won. Yeah. Um, and it was. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll we'll talk in a bit more depth about Chelsea, but let us stay on topic for the minute. But Christiansen coming on for Thiago Silva, and Thiago Silva started the game really well, mm. um, and it would have been understandable I guess if Christensen had come on and not been able to get into the game maybe as quickly taking some time to settle but he came in and he just he looked like he'd been there from the start yeah and he, he 
blocked a few um, crosses and because Mares was doing starting to do quite well out there. Um, I mean, Rhys James had Sterling in his pocket the yeah. entire game. I didn't know Sterling was playing. No. Yeah, um, yeah um, City were very disappointed. I mean, one shot on target the entire game was pretty dismal for a team of their quality. Absolutely. I mean, and let, let's talk about City before we, we sing the praises of Chelsea. Um, is it fair to say that some eyebrows were raised at that team selection? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know he's played that the entire season. I don't think it's even the striker. It's probably more the CDM, I think. Because I am stunned they didn't play Rodri or Fred. Yeah, Antonio. he's played... As, at least, I know he hasn't played a striker all season, but he's definitely played a CDM all season. So to not have a striker or a CDM was quite interesting. The thing is, those sorts of players... The way, especially Roger and Fernandinho, because of how good they are, they give you such a platform to build from because you've got that security, that mm. insurance. Is it mm. like having Kante for Chelsea? Yeah. Why would you change it up though, right, right at the end? Do you uh, think? Do you think Pep just felt the pressure? I don't. I just don't feel like he's a manager that would. Doesn't, feel the pressure. He doesn't strike you as the most sort of manager that no. would. Um, I did hear something about that. This was in keeping with some of his selections throughout the Champions League this season. I'll be honest, I haven't sort of double check that no. to see how his team selection has been across the Champions League stages but because you're playing Chelsea you you know you've got history against them you played them twice recently you've got all the evidence you need wouldn't, yeah wouldn't you go with how you kind of set up in the Prem again because it's Chelsea well they lost to Chelsea though but the thing is, is that like, Pep will know bet, yeah. he, will, he would have seen Chelsea in the way they played mm. they did it twice in a row he must have known that there's a, lot, a very very good chance they're just going to do same again so yeah. why didn't he do something? Maybe this was a roll in the dice. Maybe he thought, if I do this, this is different. Yeah, to and time. he came out and said that he wouldn't have changed anything and that he knew what he was doing. But I feel like yeah, deep he down he probably... Yeah, he's not going to say I feel that, like deep down he did regret doing that. Or he should regret doing that. Yeah. And then, of course, it wasn't just CDM that was eyebrow-raising. It was no recognised striker and he had Aguero and Jesus on the bench. Yeah. yeah. I have done that. Yeah. Um... I would. Have, I must admit, I know Aguero has not been fit for a lot of this season and they've won the league effectively without him. I would have been very tempted to, to go from the start with Aguero because yeah. he's a big game player. Or at least, yeah. I mean, he got 10 minutes at the end. I would have given him a lot more than 10 minutes That's because that, that game, I mean, it's his last game for the club. He's desperate to win the Champions League for Man City. Mm. I felt like he'd have been more up for it than any of those players out on that. And team. he made a difference when he came on in those 10 mm. minutes. I mean, he had two half chances where, you know, his, his crosses didn't really work out where perhaps he could have sort of fired it a bit hard or maybe even taken a shot off. Um, so yeah in those 10 minutes he made a difference so yeah. if, as you say if he had come on with half an hour to go or even started the game it might have mm. been a, a different story um, some individual performances that obviously just weren't really up to it um, Zinchenko I thought he's had a very good season don't get me wrong but he was really not out of the races he was very poor yeah. the the defending for that goal um, I mean he he is looking at Havertz, he's right in front of him. He can see that Mount's got the ball in acres, acres of space. Mm. And he just seems to take an age to react to the fact that he's effectively in on goal. I feel like for quite a few seasons now, that, that left-back position is something that... I said they've got no witnesses. I would say the left-back position for City has been a weakness for quite a long time. Because although they've got Mendy, Mendy's injured like all the time. Yeah. He's, ne- he's not dependable You don't rate Zinchenko as a long-term... Because really, I don't even I think... I think he, he's had quite a good season. I'm pretty sure he's went to City as a CDM and he's just been played there temporarily but yeah. it's just ended up sticking he's played there. a lot he has played a lot but I think that's because they've not got any other option I mean yeah. Cancelo came in and started playing left back yeah. and he's not even a left back so when you start playing people out of the positions to fill a position you know that that's a weak area yeah 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 um, and then we've, we've touched on it already but the, the two wide players um, I mean typical Guardiola he did try and stretch the game the two wide players did stay very very wide um, but yeah Sterling I mean I, I, I'm pretty sure we talked about this not that long ago and I asked the question whether he was overrated mm. or not mm. um, and don't get me wrong Reese James was absolutely superb but I felt like Sterling just for the player that he is supposed to be for club and for country I felt like he he should have been able to overcome James at certain points throughout the game but it felt like mm. he got nothing out of James all night it'd be interesting to see if he starts I think he will I feel That's, like, uh, just after I feel this like Southgate's a very sort of loyal he almost has like friends and I feel like every manager probably yeah, does don't they? I feel like Sterling you know he could be absolute trash and he'll still play almost every game um, do you think I mean is there an argument for saying that he's he's lucky to be in the squad or do you think that he'll st- he should be in the squad for his experience but well, maybe not start when he's like well even for City when he's on good form he's on good form mm. I would still have him in the squad um, one for the experience two because 
I mean, there would be uproar if he wasn't in the team. Um, I know he's not had his best season, but I think you still take him over the likes of some other players. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's people in, that have been selected for that England team that are probably, yeah, that are quite questionable. Yeah. Um, Mares was also quite. He's had. He was very instrumental in the in the semi final for for City in both legs. I of the heard semi-final. his name more than Sterling. Yeah, so. but Chilwell, Chilwell was all over him as well. Like yeah, the, yeah. the two Chelsea thing. fullbacks or the defense as a whole were just they gave him nothing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it helped that Sterling and Mares didn't really play in the position they were supposed to be playing, they kept trying to go out and play on the wings like they usually would do. And I think they were supposed to be playing almost as two strikers rather than two wingers. Yeah, it felt like there was... Obviously, they had those wide players, but then they had nothing going through mm. the middle, so they had to play out wide. Mm. And because Chelsea were playing five at the back, it was fairly easy for them just to shuffle across and mm. sort of cut that off. Um, and the one slight bad note um, is Kevin De Bruyne. Mm. He looked like probably one of the one of the few players in the team that was really looked like he might make something happen. Mm-hmm. Foden had yeah. a few moments in the first half, but then petered away as well. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, De, De Bruyne ran into a brick wall, otherwise known as Anthony <laughs> Rudiger. Yeah. And subsequently, we've learned that he's now a doubt for the Euros because he's fractured his eye socket. Yeah. Great news for and his nose. every other country. This is true, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've got a feel for for. I do feel sorry. Yeah, I mean, you think all season. And then it gets to the moment where you can sort of play for your country. And, I mean, Belgium have got a good chance of winning the Euros at the end of the day. To get that close and then be injured in the very last game of the season. He looked heartbroken when he came off. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Euros only comes around every four years. It's not like, you know, he can say, oh, I know you've got the World Cup. It's going to say you've got the World Cup next Christmas. It's not the... I know it's, you know, it's a different competition altogether. Yeah. Yeah, and I I do think there is... um, it does go to show that international football and big international competitions do mean a huge amount mm. to these players. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully he, uh, well, hopefully not for an England sake, but for his own personal sake, I hope he, uh, mm. he, hope he does make it. I hope you're well if you're listening, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bernardo Silva, we'll talk about one final Man City player. I mean, there's a man who looked lost. Did he play? He started, mm. yeah. Oh. Um, and he was the first to be hauled off. He was, for me, when he was taken off, that was almost Pep's admission that I've got this wrong. Mm. Mm. Um, and then he brought, I'm trying to think who he brought on for him. I can't remember who it was. Um, I can't remember who. It might have been think. Jesus, actually. Um, when, yeah, I think it was for, Jesus. For him. Did he not come on for De Bruyne? Uh, I don't know. Not sure. Possibly. Not sure. But yeah, it, it, it that was when it felt like to me that Pep had accepted the fact that this isn't working. I've done, this isn't right. This is I've got this wrong. Um, so yeah, it was it was a difficult night for them. Um, but let's talk Chelsea because for all Man City's, um, n- you know, wastefulness and and you know just not at the races, Chelsea really were. They they were up for it. They turned up from the start and they thoroughly deserved the win at the end. Mm, yeah, Chelsea. Yeah, they had a game plan and it it worked to oh, perfection. Right. To be honest, um, can we can we talk Timo Werner? For a second. <laughs> what I mean, they could have had so many goals if he could just hit the back of the bloody net. Um, I had, I mean, I posted, you probably saw this, I posted a bit of a piss take joke on Facebook. I said that if Timo Werner can make a professional footballer, there is genuinely hope for us all, <laughs> right? Um, most people thought it was funny, but I did get one comment from somebody who sort of um, disagreed and said that, you know, that he is a very, very good footballer, must be doing something right, it will come good, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. But my argument is that when I when I see Timo Werner make these mistakes, like the the miss the complete miss kick, like the mm. one where he was about two yards out, wherever mm. it was, and he hit it straight at the keeper, yeah. the way in which he is technically trying to hit these shots, these look like really fundamental problems in his game. Um, I mean, he's he's striking the ball while it's still under his feet. He's making wrong decisions. He's um, you know just there is a confidence issue for sure. But I feel like there's more to this than just he's having a bad run. Mm. It feels like there's there's more to this. I'm, I'm wondering whether this is something that can be coached out of him because he was always wasteful in Germany, but he just scored more goals. But he was still very, very wasteful in Germany. Um, so, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think there's a player in there that might come out next season he might start smashing the back I of the net? I just feel really sorry for him. <laughs> he's such a nice guy. Do you see him? Yeah, he's so yeah, he nice. Really nice that's what makes what me feel see. sorry for him. But for someone that's probably one of the fastest players in the league as well, I don't know how he's offside. Almost ten times a game. <laughs> he does, uh, yeah. Without scoring, he does make a difference to a game, and like he is instrumental in a lot of things. I think. Yeah, I mean, he he works very hard. He, he gets into some good positions, but then, uh, 
there is an argument to say that there's an awful, awful lot of other players that also do the same thing, but yeah. uh, but don't score goals and don't cost forty yeah. million. Yeah, at the end of the you day, do... he's been he's been brought in to be a number nine, not like a a number eleven or a number yeah. ten type. Yeah. Thing. Do you wonder though if it was him that scored the goal, not Havertz? Do you think a lot of his bad season would have been? disregarded because yeah I do um, yeah. it's a bit like um, when Fernando Torres scored that goal against mm. Barcelona he yeah. he was obviously in the middle of a bad run he didn't really ever didn't click for him at Chelsea after he I moved think if he Liverpool. got one goal it, everyone would have been like oh my yeah. god but because we all saw him miss every, every option <laughs> yeah I mean he could have had he could have had a first half hat trick or certainly two but I think now he's experienced the Premier League maybe like Obviously, he's got to work on stuff over summer. Mm. And I think I just wonder, I mean, back. all I've seen with Chelsea is them being linked with a striker. Like Lukaku's been heavily linked. Harry Kane's been linked. They've been linked with Haaland. Mm-hmm. I mean, Werner must see that. And if they're going to be bringing in a big striker, it's going to be a new number nine. I mean, they've got Tammy Abraham. They've got Giroud. They've got Werner, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... I'd be surprised if Giroud and Abraham are there next season. Certainly Giroud, I think I can see that. Do you think Timo Werner will be there? Or is he I think so. I think he'll still be there yeah. unless somebody comes in for him with a good offer that they mm. think, yeah, let's let's mm. sort of cash after in. After a season like that, I can't see Chelsea making a profit off of him. No, but equally, I think given that they've made top four, they've got to the final of the FA Cup and they've won the Champions League, I think it would be harsh if you started kicking players out of that team. I think they've all they've all earned the right collectively mm. for another go. I um, would I would give him another season, definitely. I and yeah. then I mean if he's not scoring sort of fifteen plus goals next season. Yeah, I think to to be to redeem himself, he needs to hit double figures minimum what, next season. What was um I know Harry Kane got the golden boot. What how many goals was it? For what? For Harry Kane For he got twenty three. So that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Team he needs six. six. Yeah. But I mean, he's going away with Germany, so that might make that or break him a little bit. Yeah, and and we've seen another a number of players who've gone away on international duty, and it's almost like a new surroundings, mm-hmm. fresh environment does tend to help. But if you look at his expected goals, now the expected goals is is a, it's an odd formula that's created, but so basically it works on chances created, yeah. how clear cut those chances are, and then mm-hmm. works out how many goals you should be getting. His expected goals this season was almost thirteen. I think it was like 12.6, I think it was. And he got six goals. So that mm. tells you how many chances he's squandering. Mm. Um, so mm. that he needs to... Revive. There won't be many strikers in the Premier League with the exception of one or two that get very, very close to their expected goals tally. So that's not a... You know, if that says 12, you have to be getting 12, otherwise you'll shit. Yeah, you yeah. just have to be trying to get somewhere close. He needs close. to be in double figures next year. So... Yeah. Not from just like penalties or something like that. Well, he doesn't take penalties. But, well, yeah. no. But true. maybe, you know, if... Because he can play on... double the... figures for disallowed goal. <laughs> he does play on the wing for Chelsea a little bit as mm. well. So maybe if they do bring in a number nine like a Lukaku, does that take the pressure off of Werner? Maybe he can find some extra goals Lukaku that way. Lukaku a Chelsea player. He was a Chelsea player. Yeah, but I mean now. Mm, I could see him going back. Does he fit their style? With Tuchel? I feel like they're a bit... Yeah. Well, I mean, Tuchel had Cavani. This is true. Mm. This is very true. Um, so yeah, um, let's talk Reese James quickly. We've we've obviously sung his praises already. Um, how do you see the England right back situation now? Because on the biggest club stage of them all, he has put in one hell of a performance, and he's given Southgate a real headache now. Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't know if he'll take all four right backs. Part of me thinks he might take all four and sort of count Carl Walker as a right back slash centre back. Carl yeah. Walker will hundred percent go. Yeah, oh yeah, Carl Walker will. Trent, I think, is one that's toying with the idea of going because whenever I see, I mean, I saw on BBC Sport earlier and there was it was like a little column saying which players do you think will be cut and Trent was on the front cover of it. It is weird, isn't it? Like, how have we got to the point where one of the best attacking right backs in the in the country mm. is one of the ones we're expecting to be dropped? Mm. It is really it's a really odd situation. I appreciate he's not had his best season, but then neither of Liverpool. It's not just him like, and he has recovered. His stats prove that he's had a, still a pretty decent season. Mm. So is he, a well, vic- I mean, is he a victim of his own success from previous seasons? I think Liverpool ended up finishing third and they did only finish five points behind United. Mm. So considering this, they had a bad season and we supposedly had a great season, <laughs> it's not good reading. But So, yeah, I mean... I feel like Southgate quite likes Trippier. Yeah. I think he likes Trippier, yeah. I think Trippier will be in there, especially for experience. Um, but then can you and- honestly drop Reese James after that performance? Especially, well, Champions League winner. 
Champions League winner. He's kept Sterling's one of mm. maybe Southgate will drop him. Just like how dare you do that to one of my best I boys? Think I think he'll take, he'll take he'll either take all four, or I think Trent will be the one that gets dropped. You reckon? Mm. Mm. I'd like in my mind. I think he should drop Trippier. I would, but drop I don't. Trippier. But I don't think he will because he says like. Trippier can play left back as well. We've got Luke Shaw and Ben Chilwell. I really don't think we need a third left back. I would also throw out that if if you're looking for an extra left back cover, then take Bakayo Saka. Yeah, because or, he can do left back and he can do left wing. Or Tyrone Mings is there. I'd, I'm assuming he'll take Tyrone Mings, and Tyrone Mings used to be a left back. Mm. I'm Team Trippier. Okay. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, and of course, you still got Wan Bissaka, who's not even made the squad, and he's not had a bad season. No, and he's toying with the idea of. Um, Switching legions. Yeah, to DR Congo, which I wouldn't blame him. I mean, we, England have got so many right backs. We need some more midfielders or something. Yeah, but he's still young. I mean, he's you know another great season. Mm. He can work his way in. Um, and then Ben Chilwell on the other on the other side. Do we think that? How do you see the left back battle shaping up? Because Chilwell has finished the season strongly. Yeah, Luke he's Shaw had a great has had a, has had a great season as well. So that's going to be a tricky one as well. I would have said Luke Shaw uh, because I thought Luke Shaw just had an outstanding season, and Ben Chilwell had. At the time, being kept getting swapped with um, Alonso, mm-hmm. um, but I mean, again, Champions League winner he had a, ga- a great game as well, great um, game. and he scored. He scored a winner in their Premier League game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, not that that's what he'll be brought in, but, but I, I feel think, like he's I a better s- crosser of the ball. Yeah, than I think sure. Southgate favours Ben Chilwell as well. He played two of the three England games um, mm-hmm. from the friendlies we last played. So I'd play Ben Chilwell. Indeed. Um, right, so let's just... Um, United. <laughs> let's just wrap up talking about Aguero. We obviously touched on it already that he didn't come on. In tears at the end of the game, he, he signs off um, his Man City career in disappointing fashion. He, you know, he always said that he wanted to win the Champions League with Man City, but obviously it hasn't happened. And he has today signed for, in, in the last hour or two, whatever it was you saw, he has now confirmed to be signed with mm, Barcelona. Barcelona. Um, and where does he stand in, in terms of the great Premier League strikers? Where do you think he ranks? Very high up. Um, especially, I think he's got to be um, City's icon player. Um, I was seeing that apparently City fans preferred David Silva, but I think you'd have to go for Aguero just because of that goal he scored. They're two very different players, aren't they? Um, I mean, David Silva was incredible for, for City mm. for a long oh, time. Oh, yeah, 100%. But there's a reason that Aguero's name or something... Is it his name that's being woven into the kit next season or something? Oh, is it? <laughs> there's some, they're, they're doing something with the yeah. kit and him. Oh, okay. I don't know if he's woving his name in or maybe it's his number. I don't know what it is, mm. but they're, they're doing some kind of honour. How many years was he there? Ten. Yeah, it's a long time. Um, but yeah, for me... Um, I'm trying to think of other strikers that I would put him in the same category that I'd probably put him up there with people like Omri. Yeah, I like Wayne Rooney. Yeah. I mean, well, he's, you know, <laughs> no, United and Wayne Rooney, yeah, City yeah, and no, Aguero. No, no, I get it, I get it, I get it. So, um, and then in terms of their respective seasons, it wasn't so long ago that we were looking at Chelsea and just beginning to wonder whether their season was going to fall apart all in the end of the season. They lost the FA Cup final. Top four wasn't guaranteed. And then obviously the Champions League final, which everyone sort of expected City to win. Yeah. And then ended up top four winning the Champions League final. So in the end, it's it's been a great season for them. Yeah. For Um, them next year, hmm. do, do we think they're in with a solid chance of winning the Premier League? Of challenging? I don't know about winning... I think City have just still got that squad depth. I think for me that is literally it with it when it comes to City because they do lose silly games. It's just the squad depth. I feel like this season City have had nobody to really challenge them. Mm. Um, yeah. At the start of the season they started slow but then they just hit the accelerator and then disappeared. And Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United sort of half kept with them for a little mm. while but never really threatened them, I think it's fair to say. So I think... Somebody, it would be great if somebody could get a bit closer. Whether it's Chelsea, whether it's Liverpool, whether it's United, whoever it is, I'd like to see a bit of a tighter fight for the for the title mm. next year. Mm. I think Tuchel has proven that he he can tactically win games. Mm. Um, he's his record since taking over at Chelsea is very very good. He's only lost a couple of games in quite dramatic fashion. One of them against West Brom. So it'd be interesting to see, given a full season, given a summer, and maybe bringing one or two players in, what he can do. Um, yeah, like you, I think I think they'll be there or thereabouts. Mm. Whether they can mount a proper serious challenge is another question. Sure. I think they'll challenge. I think they'll be sort of fighting for <coughs> first, second, third with Liverpool. Um, I think those three will really have a, really have a go. It will, I mean, again, it'll all depend on injuries. 
you know, if they have a couple of injuries to key players, then they could have a season like Liverpool. Indeed. So, and then for City, I mean, they, they've won the Premier League again. They've won the Carabao Cup again. Um, but this Champions League was the one they really wanted, wasn't it? So do you think... I'd, you know, I'd love to know whether the fans, whether the players, or maybe even the owners, would they swap a Premier League for a Champions League, do you think? You can't find a fan. <laughs> oh, shots <laughs> fired. Me that comes up with it. Um, I think, me. yeah, now that they've won a few, I think that first Premier League... Um, Surely they're just going to be gunning for the Champions League every every season now. Yeah, I feel like I mean, that's just the cherry on top of the cake now, isn't it? It almost feels like the Premier Pep, League's become a bit easy in my opinion. Do you think Pet will stay there until he gets the Champions League? I think so. I can't see him going anywhere else, really. I was actually going to ask that. Do you do you, do you think, had he have won it, do you think there was a possibility that he might have walked away in the summer? I don't think he would have left. Um, I feel like he's built up quite a sort of good relationship with the club. Um, I mean, they pretty much sign him any player he wants. Um, and you, you look at all the players, he's, he's been there quite a while now, um, and all the players he's brought in and stuff, I mean, they're pretty much all his own players now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I can't see him... Maybe, you know, if it takes another year or two for them to win the Champions League, he might leave because it had been there like six, seven years. Mm. And historically, he doesn't stay at clubs. No, this, is, this is the this longest, is the longest he's, he's ever stayed at, stayed at, at clubs. Barcelona, which I is I think he'll club, give it so. at least another year to get try and get Champions League. Depends it's, how close they get next year. It'll be mm. tough because knockout competition is so different. Um, I mean, they'll be favourites again going into the competition. Um, but I mean, the likes of you know Barcelona, Real Madrid, I imagine will improve, and every team will be improving again. So imagine it. Imagine if Aguero goes to Barcelona when they win the Champions League. Yeah, League well, year. I mean, Suarez went to Atletico and they won La Liga. Yeah, exactly. Um, right. Okay. Let's move on then. Let's talk about the other European final last week. Dan, I'm sure you can't wait to talk about this. Um, is it fair to say this didn't go to plan? I mean, I I'll be honest. I, I didn't. Know how you cocked it up? I don't. I didn't see. <laughs> Uh, the first half I saw most of the second half and then obviously extra time and penalties um, I messaged you to say give me an update on how the game went and you basically said that you know we smashed them just couldn't score so yeah uh, we I mean we well exactly that we we were literally all over them um, they scored from a set piece which seems to almost it's a good goal actually yeah but it's well it worked good for them poor defending I mean Lindelof we seem to just always do it's zonal marking, and, on and it, it yeah. was honestly like you shoving over Fran. Do you know what I mean? Lindelof was like a paper bag in that defence. I do do that often. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, he was honestly like a paper. He just got shoved out the way, and he was sort of floundering around. I didn't know who he was supposed to be marking. But... I presume this coincides with when you text me and said, "For fuck's sake, Lindelof." Yeah, just, <laughs> it was that moment. It's just not the first. You know, if it'd been the first time that it happened then fine, but it's happened all season. This is what I mean. Like, how did you come second? Well, yeah. Um, and then <laughs> you, we still, did... you still I can't said, work it out. Honestly, yeah. I was watching the highlights earlier and I was just like, I'm still <laughs> not there. And I, I said to, I was at, with a friend down um, the club and I said, you know, if we get a goal back, I thought we'd go on and win it because we were absolutely hammering. They'd all, they sort of had two rows of four and we just sat back and were almost playing for a 1-0 win. Um, and then as soon as we got that goal, they were sort of, I don't know if they were panicked, but they were still just playing the same way, just sat back and were almost playing. It seemed like they were playing for penalties um, mm. because we were just attacking and attacking. But the problem with, I say it all the time, Ollie just has a plan A. And if he can't break down that sort of defence, there's no like, right, let's go to plan B, let's try something different. It's let's just keep trying the same thing over and over again until it hopefully works. Yeah. I mean, when you look at the Villarreal team, I mean, they came seventh in La Liga. And if you look at how Barcelona and Real Madrid performed this season, mm. I mean, Atletico ended up winning it, but none of them really ran away with it. No. Um, so to come seventh in that league is nothing to shout about. Um, their midfield pairing is Etienne Capu and Francois Coquelin, two Premier mm. League rejects, effectively. Um, and yeah, it's it was not a good result. And of course, it went all the way to penalties. Um, and De Gea... He's not saved a penalty since 2016, mm. um, which is really... And you think by law of averages, he must have accidentally saved one by now, but no, <laughs> apparently not. Um, and it just... Sometimes it almost felt like he wasn't trying. 
Do you know what I mean? Like it felt like some of them were a bit token divey, like yeah. he wasn't actually trying. It's he didn't weird. really get anywhere near. His that, actual I mean. kick looked like he wasn't trying. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, the actual penalty he took was diabolical, yeah, yeah. especially after their keeper's penalty. Their keeper's penalty was ridiculous. You <laughs> would have thought he was a striker. <laughs> I literally, when he stepped out, I was like, right, here we go. Chelsea he, need him as if a De Gea striker. can save this penalty, then I'm fairly confident De Gea can score his. Yeah, and the bloke just smashed it top bins. I was literally mouth Nonchalant, dropped, yeah. mouth dropped to the table. I was like, "What the hell?" But yeah, David, the, the highest penalty was. It was almost like, you know what? Well, everyone scored. I can't be asked. He yet. looked, he let's, looked let's, nervous. Let's just go. He looked nervous walking up to it. Uh, to be fair, I, I, as soon as I saw Lindelof and Fred going up, I was like, "Yeah, it's over." I mean, I suppose the argument to say is De Gea is there not to take the penalty? Yeah, I mean, people um, say like, "Oh, has he not been practicing?" At the end of the day, why know, would even you? if he practices, you're not going to suddenly. But, I mean, yeah, expert, if you're a manager yeah, and you're telling your goalkeeper, can you practice taking penalties, please? You're, the, goal, the keeper's probably looking at you going, like, are you off your rocker? Mm. Like, I'm, I'm not there to take penalties. Mm. But then he's had 10 attempts to, to save one. And I've seen and I've seen Aguero take worse penalties than that. Yeah. It wasn't well, the worst penalty it, in the yeah, world. Week, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he put it in the corner, but the keeper's dived the right way and it's not had enough power on it to get past him. Um, sticking on goalkeeper topic, it seems that Tom Heaton is on his way to Manchester United um, for a second spell with the club. Um, it leaves you with four goalkeepers, De Gea, Romero, Henderson, and now Tom Heaton. Um, I would be surprised if Romero's... His contract's not... run out. Yeah, okay, There's so he's leaving. Yeah. Okay. Well, three, because Romero's leaving Romero's in there. June. Um, but are you surprised with this signing? Because he's 35, he's had injury issues. Mm. Um, I just wonder whether... I mean, he's saying when he's coming into the club, he's saying that he's coming for the number one yeah, spot. Yeah, he's I mean, I would have thought that we've brought him in to be our third choice keeper. Where is he at the moment? Villa. That's it. Um, I, I think he's coming to be our third choice keeper. And obviously, I'm sure he's, you know, he's... Um, uh, what's the word? I'm sure he wants to fight for first. And I'm sure he'll play the odd game. Especially um, if he's played Henderson so much. But I, I can't see us keeping both De Gea and Henderson. We can't be doing what Ollie's done and swap every single game because you just can't do that do you so, so do you see him then because it, this is almost like the Arsenal situation mm. at the end of last season with Martinez and, and Leno where Martinez came in because Leno was injured did really well and all of a sudden they had like oh shit who do we pick mm. and it was almost like you have to pick one and then if you do mm. pick one the other one is probably going to leave yeah and it feels like that might be what's happening I think United. I think he has got to pick one he can't keep doing this you know you play this week and then you play this week um it's tough to... I don't know who I would say because every. I think most people want Henderson because he's younger and he's English. But the last few weeks, he's just looked like a flappy bird. Mm. I mean, he comes out for punches that he probably shouldn't. They're on like the edge of his box and he misses them. And he just looks like he's trying too hard at the moment to try and get that number one spot. Um, and I know De Gea has not had his best season for a couple of years now. He's, well, he's not been at his best for a couple of years, but... I still think he's a better goalkeeper than Dean Henderson. And he's only 30. And you think goalkeepers can easily go 33, 34. Oh, and the rest. Sort of yeah, almost in there to the late yeah. 30s. Um, so I, as much as I don't want to sell Henderson, I mean, ideally I would say loan him out again, but I don't think that's what he would want. I no. feel like he would want to go to a club and cement a place. So He'll he'll probably feel like he's you know he's played enough first-team football for Manchester mm. United that Oli effectively has got enough evidence to make a decision. If you're loaning me out, that tells me that based on what you've seen from me this season in the sticks, you don't think I've got it. Yeah, I mean, the rumours I've seen over the last week are that we're potentially swapping De Gea for Oblak. That would be... Um, I'd take that deal in. Yeah, I would. Week. I mean, Oblak's two years younger than De Gea as well, so I would 100% take that. And Oblak, is, isn't he rated as basically the best goalkeeper yeah, in the world? Yeah, he's supposed to be the best goalkeeper in the world. De Gea started his career at Atletico and his family live in Madrid, so, I mean, it would be a win-win for everybody, I believe. So. Yeah. Um, and then at the other end of the pitch for United, um, Cavani has obviously agreed to stay for another year. You've still got Rashford, Greenwood, Martial there. Um, Sancho is the rumour that's started up again. God knows how long that's going to drag out for this mm. summer. Does he actually want to come to United? Apparently so. Apparently he's agreed personal terms. It's really? just um, we need United to try and get he's... a couple of pennies off of the bill before we <laughs> sign him. Um, so do, do you... Given that Sancho is not going to come cheap, do you do you actually think there's a realistic chance, especially with Cavani saying that Man United don't sign a striker this summer? Oh, I don't think we'll sign a striker. No, no. I mean, we've from what I've seen, I would argue that you don't 
That's not that you I don't, don't need one. I don't think we need one. Your Especially priorities are elsewhere. We've Cavani well. staying, and we've got Rashford, Lindenham. and we've got. <laughs> I mean, Martial, I would sell, but I don't think we're going to sell him. Could you? Yeah, I mean, you could arguably sell him or use that money to yeah. a fund Sancho, but also to fund another centre midfielder. I think, mm. um, and also definitely another centre back. Yeah. yeah, in my opinion, we need three positions, maybe four a push. Um, centre back, definitely. I think we've pretty much tied up that Pau Torres from Villarreal. Um, so we need a CDM because we can't. If we keep Pogba, we need a CDM to play alongside him because I really don't want. Fred and McTominay again next season, <laughs> and then right. Do you think? Do you think McTominay's got a few? Because I think we're, most people are kind of accepting that Fred does a job, he works hard, but he's not quality enough to win you a league. McTominay, I think the jury is for me. The jury is still out on him because he mm-hmm. can be very good, but at the same time, he does also have games where he looks. Yeah, he looks lost. The problem is with McTominay, he's not a CDM. He's a he's like a box to box, so he's like a sort of Pogba. And he's never going to get in ahead of Pogba. And then we, I mean, what do you do with Van der Beek? Yeah. Well, I don't understand what Van der Beek's position is supposed to be. A bench at the moment. Yeah. Nor does anyone, so you know well, no. <laughs> um, And then I would sign a right winger, which would be nice if it was Sancho. And we're being quite heavily linked with Trippier. So it'd be good to get him as like a backup to Juan Bissaka. Would he come in as a backup? No. I feel he's, like I feel uh, like he's not. I mean, I don't know how old he's he is. He's 32. Yeah. Mm. You would say he's probably got another couple of years at the top left, if as long as he can stay injury free. So I mean, I guess if Man United are fighting on all fronts, they'll need a deeper squad. Mm. Um, they need cover in all positions. You know, look at what's look at City. You know, there's nothing to stop him taking the right back spot. I'd get him back in the. Does that mean you'd be a Man United fan next year? I mean, I'd watch them <laughs> maybe a bit more. Than they <laughs> it might improve, Wan, but yeah. it might help Wan Bissaka. I mean, we got Tellers in, and Shaw's had the best season of his career. So this is true. No, this is very true. Um, and then just just sum up the season as a whole for United. So um, Ole Ole has has definitely made progress this season. I'm going to play devil's advocate here for a second because I know your feelings mm. and what you're likely to say, um, but you you can't deny that he has made progress this year. I mean, he's he, you've got second in the league. Um, he's got you to a Europa League final. Okay, it's he's fallen short there, but is based on that you'd have to say that he's he's given himself an opportunity. Well, he said he's given himself the right to have the opportunities to have another go next year. It's the best United have done for a while, isn't it? Mm. Except from Mourinho. S- yeah. Well, I mean, if it weren't for De Gea, we probably would have lost to Roma in the semi-final because they battered us in that second leg and we were 6-2 up. But, I mean, positive and negatives, yes, we finished second and for a little while we did have a little title challenge on. Um, so, yeah, we've done better in the league and I'm happy about that. Um, you don't look it. <laughs> yeah, tell, tell just, face, mate. The problem, <laughs> I, the problem I have with Ollie is I don't think we'll ever win anything under him. You think he'll be the nearly man? Yeah, I mm. think you know we'll slowly make a little bit of progression and a little bit of progression. But I think a final is probably the best we'll ever do. I don't think we'll get very far in the Champions League, and I don't think we'll win the Premier League. Mm. We'd be lucky maybe to win like a League Cup or an FA Cup, but they don't really bother me too much. What is his issue with substitution? Well, that, I was going to say. Improvements next year, he's got to use his squad. We can't have the same 11 every single week and 85th minute substitutes. Mm. It's ridiculous. That is really, really strange. Yeah. I mean, and just like tactics, I want to see a plan B. I don't want to see the same tactics every single game, no matter who we play. Mm. Because, you know, like we lost to Sheffield because we played against Sheffield the same way we played against City. And City come at us and attack and we can sort of get in behind and counter-attack and it works perfectly. Sheffield don't do that. They sit back and try and get, do what we're doing, try and counter-attack and get a 1-0 win. Yeah. So when they're sat back, we can't ping the ball over the top to Rashford because he's got nowhere to run. It's, it's always felt like the, the, the owners, obviously, have really backed Ollie. They've always stuck with him even mm. during those really bad times where they won really bad runs. Um, but sooner or later, you'd think that grace period where they give him that benefit of the doubt has got to run out. So at some point, the owners are going to say, yes, you're progressing, but we need you to take that next step. Mm. Um, so I get, I guess the question is, where do you think that line is? Do you think that if, if next season he goes on another really bad run, do you think they'll pull the trigger then? Or do you think they'll stick with him? Um, well, I mean, his contract's up at the end of the season, so he's going to be signing a, a new three-year contract, I imagine. Um, so I think that's going to buy him time unless mm. he you know unless we're sort of sat 10th by Christmas I can see him being there for another year at least well 
have fun next season, mate, yeah. and for the next three years. Right, okay. Um, right, we were going to do the Crystal Palace re- season review now, but given that we've run, we've run on quite nicely into this first half, we'll leave that to the second half of the show. Um, so we'll head for a break, and we'll see you in a minute. Hey everybody and welcome back to the show. Um, so we will start, before we get into the season review of things, where we can talk about four teams from the Premier League that we uh, haven't covered in huge or great amounts of depth in recent weeks and months, um, it's probably worth mentioning the Championship Playoff Final. Um, Brentford promoted to the uh, Premier League into the fir- into the top flight for the first time in about 70 years. Um, 70? I think it's about 70 odd years, yeah, because there was a story doing the rounds of a um, a fan, a long, lifelong yeah, fan. Bloke, yeah. I think he's now, I think he's in his 80s, maybe in his late 70s, and he was alive and a supporter of the team when they were last in the top flight. That's and he's a fan now, he still goes to games and now he's seen them return to the top flight after like 74 years or whatever it is. So it's, it's an amazing story. Um, but yeah, I think second time around, they've finally broken that, curse of was it 10 or 9 playoff finals without mm, winning yeah, without winning yeah. Um, so yeah I'm looking forward to seeing him in the Premier League next year I think we've got some exciting players mm. it'll be in- interesting to see how um, Ivan Tony gets on so do you think what out they? of the three do you think they got a good chance <gasps> yeah I mean they smashed Swansea I was I really thought Swansea would win it just because I thought against Bournemouth I thought they weren't too convincing and Swansea seemed quite convincing in their game but I mean Swansea just didn't turn up. No, they were poor. What are they, they like as a team? Like, they, are they like a Leeds or are they like a Wolves? Or... Uh, They've got a very got eccentric Pete, manager. Yeah, we'll have to get Pete on the show yeah. again. Um, he's got a very eccentric manager who loved a good swear on TV. And that's, all, <laughs> that's always a plus in my book if you've got a manager who swears <laughs> on live TV. Like, kind of like Jurgen. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, and there's, yeah, there's always room in the Premier League for another one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, they do play an, an attacking brand of football. They score a lot of goals. So. And the only thing that worries me is that a number of teams have come up from the championship in recent years playing this amazing open attacking football and then it's caught them out because they try and play the same way in the Premier League and they can't get away with it. So that's my only concern with Brentford is that they can do that. If if I, Ivan Tony can continue to score, the, the you know, I doubt he's going to get 33 goals like he did in the championship, but if he can get somewhere between 10 and 15... If he can do better than Timo Werner, then yeah. Well. well, I mean, Jorginho did better than Timo Werner <laughs> this year, so... But yeah, I think um, I think they got a good chance, but um, they will. They need to make a few Is signs. Is he like their best player? Whoever you just. Um, Emiliano looked good. Uh, again, we'll probably need Pete for this, but Emiliano looked good. Um, they've even got Winston Reid playing for him, which I, really? I completely forgot he was there. Yeah, so didn't he go abroad? He was. Yeah, he was in America, oh. I think, for a bit. Um, I just, it's such a sad story for him because he was such a good player for us. I mean, he was being linked with like Liverpool and stuff. Mm. And then he, re- he wrecked his ACL, and that basically took two years to recover uh, from. Um, which in this day and age, given all the amazing treatment that you can get, to have an ACL last that long, that must have been that shows you how bad yeah. it was. Um, and he just never worked his way back in the team. He had a few preseason games for us, but never got back in the first team picture. We loaned him out here, there, and everywhere. And I, I, is he on loan at Brentford? I can't remember if he's on loan there or whether he's permanently there. Um, so yeah, whether. If he's still there next season, it'd be great to see him back in the Premier League and sort of resurrect his mm. career, even though it is sort of late in the day for his career because he's not getting any younger. Yeah. But uh, no, it'd be interesting to see how they get on next year. Um, so let's talk. Let's talk Crystal Palace. Um, there's a bit of a manager merry-go-round going on in the Premier yeah, League and in, yeah. in and around Europe and some of the other leagues. Um, and Roy Hodgson is riding off into the sunset. He's refused to confirm if this is retirement because he doesn't want to be one of those managers with the big fanfare to say he's leaving and then come back in a year's time. I saw him link with the West Brom job this morning. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? Hmm. That wouldn't be the worst shout. No. Um, you know, very experienced manager. West Brom might need that in the championship. Mm. That's not the worst idea. Um, he's had four years in charge at, at, at Palace. It's For me, it's difficult to look back on those four years. I looked at their league, position, league positions and they finished like 14th twice and an 11th and a 12th. Um, it's difficult to say whether they're successful or seasons or whether they're failures because mm. those sorts of positions, you would argue, they are minimum requirements, aren't they, really? Because a team like Palace, they've got an okay squad. That is probably the minimum you'd expect from them. I think that, yeah, I mean, if you ever play football manager and you get like the goals for the start of the season, I think theirs would be mid-table finish. Yeah. 
Um, and, and you know they don't have they, they they don't splash the cash particularly. Um, they probably being nice. They don't have the pulling power to get big name marquee it's signings. A bit of a myth team. They are, and yeah. that, that sounds harsh, but I think that's the reality of it. Mm. Um, I mean, they've done well to keep Zahar as long as they have. Um, and I know a few Palace fans, and I think most they will certainly agree with this. And I think I've seen in one or two of their forums that most people were accepting of the fact that Roy's time was was done. Yeah. They were getting a bit they were getting a bit bored of his style of football. But mm. you know, it's you've got to be careful what you wish for because look at what happened when they tried to play attacking yeah, football with, with Frank the Ball. Uh, and they lost like seven games in a row without scoring. Yeah, so they've got to be careful sucks. what they wish for. Um, so the next steps are going to be vital for them. Um, who do you who do you see coming in? Zidane. <laughs> <laughs> I would quite like to see Frank Lampard go there. Um, I think that'd be a good fit. Yeah, because I, I don't think... I think if they can bring in a couple more quality players, I don't think he'd have to worry too much about relegation. No. And it would give him two or three years of getting used to Premier League football, getting used to sort of running a squad. Um, because, he, I mean, he was only at Derby for one season, wasn't he? Yeah. So he's not really got any managerial experience. No, and so to be chucked in the deep end at Chelsea, yeah, was a big which ask. was uh, just a pointless um, sort of appointment. Um, well, so it was I, an easy appointment, wasn't it, because they're Chelsea. Oh, yeah, don't get it. It's, so. you know, it's a fairy tale thing, but I knew it wasn't going to work out. I just thought it was way too soon for him. So I'd like to see him go to like a, a mid-table team like Palace. Would he be able he to go do. back to Chelsea? Oh, yeah, one day in the future, I'm yeah. sure they'd take him. But, I mean, Zidane joins and leaves Real Madrid. When, like, whenever he wants. Years, Allegri yeah. does the same with Juventus. Allegri does Juventus, yeah. So, um, yeah, it'd be interesting. Do you think um, that whatever manager comes in, do you think part of that will hinge on whether Zaha stays or goes? Or do you think that's by the by, it's not going to make any difference? Uh, part of me, obviously I'm sure Palace would love to keep Zaha, but part of me feels like they should let him go just to get rid of that saga. Yeah. Because it, it just feels like a... Uh, sort of a thing every single season. Yeah. Does he back actually to... want to be there? He has consistently said that he will. He wants a, a big move. Yeah, he wants. But to he has always said he will always be committed if that doesn't happen. Yeah. So he's 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 rode that middle ground really nicely right. because he did not... sign a new contract as yeah. well. So it's not like he could have quite easily just seen it out and sort of had the move for free. So you've got to say fair play to him for that. Yeah, I mean, he's as I say, he's rode the middle ground well. He's not pissed off the fans. He's shown the fans that he's committed. Mm. And I don't think Crystal Palace fans, I think you'd have to be re- realistic to say that he probably could go and play for a better team. Could he get in a top four team? I'm not sure. No, I mean, isn't, you know, he is like a sort of big fish in a small pond, but he's not like a Cristiano Ronaldo at Crystal Palace. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He's, I would say he's like a Everton... Um, Wolves, that kind of team. Yeah, Europa, 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 <laughs> Tottenham, <laughs> Arsenal. Well, Tot- Arsenal, Arsenal. I mean, you say Tottenham, but if 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 they lose Kane and if they no, also I mean, lose, lose Bale, lose. Mm. there's room. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he might be available for. I mean, the the sort of figures they mentioned in the past are ridiculous. I don't think you can realistically expect to get seventy million for Zahar. I think no. forty max for Zaha. Um I know he's a good player, mm. but I don't think he's as good as at seventy million personally. Then again, we paid fifty million for Wan Bissaka. So how much did you True. pay for Aaron Maguire? Yeah, too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd also like to say that we need to. Everyone should um, take a moment and spare a thought for Pori Barici Eze. I mentioned this yeah. before the stream started. Uh, the stream, the, the podcast. Um, he tore his Achilles tendon, which is a is one of the most, Ooh. in my mind, is one of the most Whoa. horrific injuries you can have because the very thought of it makes me shiver with fear. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever, have you ever seen the movie Hostel. It's a horror movie. No, probably no. not. I'm not. I won't go into too much detail because it's awful. There's a there's a part in the movie where an injury is inflicted upon someone's Achilles. Put it. Let's put it that way. And it's it's absolutely horrific. I see. Um, <laughs> and obviously, this is a very long term injury. These are serious injuries. These are months and months and months. Mm. And so he did the injury. Apparently, he he assumed he was kicked. And we actually know something. Dean Preston. He just done his Achilles mm. as well. So he's had to have surgery. Um, and. Apparently he he thought he was kicked. He turned around, realized there was no one near him, and then he sort of like dawned on him that this was a serious injury. Got back to the changing room, looks at his phone, and has a text in there to say that he's been part of the provisional England Euro squad. And apparently all his Crystal Palace mates were like basically crying for him because they couldn't believe the sheer bad luck that you know he just had this one of the biggest moments of his of his young career, and it's been ruined by this freak injury at training. We think he got an England call up there. Cause I, I mean, don't... he probably would have been one of the ones to get dropped. I've never of course. Even heard I mean, it. I was surprised in the first place that he was even called up. Mm. Um, but 
you know whether he's been whether he would be um, excluded from the final squad or not. The very fact that he was included is a massive yeah, um, in, and not even to, like it's probably quite a trip for some of them to just go and do like the three days. Well, training Bevis has just come there. from the championship as well. I mean, obviously that'd be amazing. To, I'm yeah, watching the England video. England. It looks very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he has been involved in England's under twenty ones for yeah. a long time. Yeah. so it's not yeah, like yeah, he doesn't yeah. have some it's kind of good. pedigree with the national yeah. national setup. Um, so yeah, it's. Um, it's going to be interesting. What about signings-wise? What do they need, do you think, Palace? Uh, potentially time. a replacement for Zahar. I think they need to sort their defence out. I feel like their defence yeah, is ageing. Yeah, I mean, it's got Gary Cahill and Scott Dan, <laughs> isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and Scott. they've got, um, what's his name, uh, Kelly? Is it Martin? Not yeah, Martin. Is it Martin, Martin Kelly? Kelly? Yeah, yeah, the right back. Yeah. I feel like, you know, he's been, he's one of those just sort of so bog-standard right back, mm. you know, like a Dan Bards or Phil Bardsley type player, sorry. Um, mm. Van Arnholt left back as... He yeah, must be about 50 by now. now. Yeah. So I think defensively, they're going to need to recruit a few. Mm. Um, but they need a good good centre midfield. I think attacking-wise, I don't think they're too bad. It's potentially a striker. I mean, I know Benteke's probably had one of his better seasons at Palace. Um, Bashwai will be going back to Chelsea. I can't see him going back to Palace because nah, he's been poor he again. Well, he's not really played, is he? Um, so I feel like they need a striker potentially which they could get if they did sell Zahar probably spend some money on a decent striker yeah um, because although Ben Teke has had one of his better seasons you can't guarantee that he's going to be scoring goals again next season no, no exactly so an, an interesting summer ahead for, for Palace um, let's talk um, one or two other clubs let's start with Leeds um, obviously they've had a fantastic season first season in the Premier League yes I mean my notes are a little bit different to yours I've sort of summed up their seasons and stuff but I mean it was their first season back in the Premier League since 2004 it's a long time yeah it doesn't seem that long no it really doesn't Leeds are one of those clubs that you know that you just associate them with Premier League football so Mm. for them to have been out of it for 17 years 16, 17 years that's a long long time yeah Mm. bearing in mind they they also weren't just in the Championship they went down to League One yeah so you know that's quite the return back to the back to the top flight for them yeah um, I mean, cups, cup wise, they didn't do very well. They sort of lost. Um, did they lose to Crawley? They did lose to Crawley oh, in the yeah. FA Cup, and they lost to Hull in the second round of the League Cup. Mm. Um, their first game of the season, they lost three to uh, four three to Liverpool. Oh god, that feels like a long time ago, didn't it? What a game that was, yeah. by the way. Um, and then the following week, they beat Fulham four three. Um, so that sort of set the precedent of what sort of team Leeds were going to be in the Premier League. Yeah, and they've, carried, lots, they've sort of carried that on lots. for the entire season, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, I sort of did a big talking point for each um, of the three teams we're going to talk about. So the big talking point for Leeds, um, I said, was sort of their attitude going into every game. Um, I said that it didn't matter whether they were playing City or Sheffield. They went into every game playing exactly the same way, like expansive, entertaining football. Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at their overall results, I mean, I think the in the last sort of five or six weeks, things changed a bit in terms that they were still scoring a reasonable number of goals, but they'd also stopped conceding. But up until that point, their goal difference was basically always zero because they kept scoring goals mm. and they'd win one week, they'd win three or four one, and then the next week they'd get smashed three or four yeah. one. It would always balance itself out. There was, yeah. there was no middle ground with Leeds, it seemed. No. <laughs> uh, but I mean, that, as you say, that's testament to them. Right? Bielsa knew that they had enough to stay up. Mm. And he's like, do you know what? Screw it. We're going for it. We're going to go for every game that we can win this. Yeah. And what a you know, refreshing yeah. season it was for them. In the I've really league. enjoyed watching these, actually. Probably been one of the top teams I've enjoyed watching. 100%. Um, mm. I think for me... I think because you never know what the result's going to be, do you? No, exactly. And I feel, to maybe not so much in the second half of the season, but certainly the first half of the season, I felt the same way about Villa. Mm. Um, I thought they were very good. I know we'll talk about them in a sec. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Leeds, I thought, just brilliant this year. Mm. Really, really good. Um, a little stat as well. Leeds have actually got more Spanish players going to the Euros than Real Madrid have. That's something, isn't it? <laughs> With, uh, but then Real Madrid Diego have got... But <laughs> I was going to say, Real Madrid have got any, so no. they don't need one. No, no, no. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, we were talking about this the other day about this, but it wasn't so long ago that the Spanish, the Spanish team was basically just Barcelona and Real yeah. Madrid and yeah. maybe one or two from Atletico, and that was it. Um, so for them to not have a single Spanish player, I mean, Real Madrid are still supposedly one of, if not the premier Spanish team, along with Barcelona. So yeah. to, to not have a home, a home nation player well, in the Spanish squad behind Atletico, yeah, um, it, that's the last day. That's incredible. Crazy. That really yeah. is. Um, obviously, Calvin Phillips getting an England call up, and he probably will be in the England team. So that's testimony to Leeds as well. Yeah, I've not heard about his injury because I know he got he picked up an injury towards the end of the season. Yeah, and I've yeah. not heard anything more. So I'm assuming it was 
precautionary that they took him off and he's okay. Yeah, we're still there, I think, isn't he? Still at the camp, so I don't. Think... I mean, he, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be there if he was injured. I mean, yeah. you've got Pope yeah. and um, who was the other one that had to wasn't included? I can't remember who it was. Um, yeah, and then in, in sort of league league wise, they finished ninth uh, with eighteen wins, five draws, fifteen losses, and fifty nine points, which was. Actually, only two points behind Arsenal. I was going to say, up until about two or three games, there was an outside chance that they might have pushed for that Europa Conference yeah, position. and they did actually, I mean, during the last game of the season, I was keeping an eye on the table, they did actually leapfrog Arsenal um, at one point, and then they sort of it ended up just below them. But Yeah, that was just going back to their goal difference, they actually finished on plus eight in the end. Yeah. Uh, which is which is a remarkable season. They had one of, they won, won the last four of the season as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what do you think next season? Do you think there'll be a one season wonder or do you think this is this Well Bielsa signed another one year contract. It's interesting to just keep signing is one it year. One? I'd heard yeah. it was two. No, one well, I've read one. Okay. Um, I read it was a one year extension. Well, the fact that he's still there is yeah. is, is the um, key point here. It depends on what players they bring in, because they want to keep that Jack Harrison, I think, from City. They've had him on loan for about three years. Yeah, so and he's 24. I mean, I can't see City ever using him. He's not getting in City's no. team, is he? So as long as he's for the right... Either they'll keep loaning him yeah. or they'll, just, they'll maybe just buy him at a tw- cut price. 20 mil or something like that. Do you think he'll come on that sort of figure? I don't Depends think I don't think City will contract. care enough about him to want that sort of much. I know that sounds really harsh, mm. but I, if he's if he's been out on loan all this time, if he... I don't, I don't know what his contract's like at City, but if he's only got a couple of years left, I can see him letting go for about 10. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, if they can sign players like that on permanent, I think that would help them. Um, Keeping Rafinha. I'd... Yeah, Rafinha. Because obviously they're going to have a, a... That Mesley, I think, has been linked with like PSG and stuff. Yeah. Um, their goalkeeper. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see who they can keep and bring in. And um, yeah, hopefully they'll be make a fight of it and try and get back up there again. Uh, I mean, Wolves managed to get into Europe and that, didn't they? So maybe they'll be... I mean, we might even see Wolves. We'll talk about Wolves in a minute, but they might pop up again next season so mm. yeah um but moving on to villa um their second season back in the the top flight having survived on the last day of the league last year i know yeah we keep going back to that point but i think it's it's worth reiterating just how much of a transformation they've mm. had this season yeah um you know the fact that they as you say survived on the last season last day of the season um in quite dramatic fashion in the end um and at one point, I mean, I know their season petered out in the end, but at one point they were looking on for a European place. So. Yeah, yeah, they were up there for quite a while, weren't they? And they sort of dropped away a bit. I think that was a lot to do with Jack Grealish missing. Yeah, that's certainly, you know, he's such a big player for that team. Um, uh, in terms of the Cups, again, not great from Villa. They got to the fourth round, losing to Stoke, um, and they were knocked out in the third round of the FA Cup by Liverpool, which can't really blame them for. Um, their first game of the season they got off to a winning start with a 1-0 win against Sheffield United uh, but their most memorable game we've talked about quite a lot <laughs> is obviously them beating uh, Liverpool 7-2 which kind of made everybody question whether football was broken at that point <laughs> yeah I mean again a little bit like we say with Leeds it seems so long ago doesn't it that game mm. um, and it's worth mentioning as well that I know Van Dijk's been out all season but he was around that game mm. Liverpool, Liverpool at that point didn't have the injury crisis that they ended up having, mm. um, they were just absolutely torn to shreds. Yeah. And it was, um, I mean, Adrian didn't help the case. I think he gave away the first goal from memory with a really poor um, pass out from the back. But yeah, wow, 7-2. I mean, who would have thought that the, the champions from the previous season would turn up at Villa Park and get smashed 7-2? Yeah, and after they're literally the same day just taking the piss out of us for losing 6-1 to Spurs, we all the better. Um, I didn't actually realise this, but Ross Barkley actually made 24 appearances for Villa this season. I remember scoring seeing three that goals. Twice. Yeah, I, I did not realise he'd played that many games. Yeah, he's he's an interesting one actually because I mean he's not made the um, the squad for the for the Euros, mm. um, and it wasn't so long ago that actually he was in fine form for England yeah. um, and playing well and. He's just Ever faded since he away. Went to Chelsea, really. Yeah, I mean, he, he, again, he was he was still okay at Chelsea. He had some good moments, and again, played well for England. And when he went to Villa, he, I mean, a bit like Villa did as well. They started the season on fire. Him, the the trio of Grealish, Barkley, and Watkins mm. looked deadly at the start of the season, and then I think he got injured for a little while, and then I'll be honest, he's been a bit of a ghost since then, isn't mm. he? Yeah, yeah, um, and obviously Ollie Watkins having his first season in the Premier Leagues. 
16 goals from 40 appearances. It's not too bad for... Absolutely and not. And an England call-up. And, uh, yeah, and, and an England, England goal. goal. Yeah. Yeah. And an England yeah. goal, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Villa have actually got two players in the England team with Grealish and Ollie Watkins. Uh, well, three, Tyrone Mings. And Tyrone Mings, sorry, yeah, I forgot about Tyrone Mings, so, which isn't bad going, three players. Absolutely not. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's interesting to think well, what they would do next season because... They've got the ba- They've they've clearly got the basis of a really good team. They've got some great players in there that have sort of really come out of their shell for want of a better expression and really expressed themselves this season. I'm thinking about um, who's the other centre back uh, for Villa. His name eludes me. Uh, beginning with the K. Yes, uh, I can't remember his name. Right, this is going to annoy me. I'm going to quickly go and look at their squad because that's going to wind me up. <laughs> I think I'm going to say it's. Um, it's up there is it not at the top uh, where is he where is he where is he on this list talk amongst yourselves everyone while we find this who are you looking for oh no it's Courtney House oh who's there no, they've got who's there go up look at their starting 11 House. Oh, Conser. Conser, that's Conser, what I was thinking Conser, yes, yeah. Conser. There we go. We know what we do, we they promise. They moved him right back, that's why I didn't see him. Um, but yeah, you know, he he's had a great season. Obviously, Emilio Martinez, probably in the frame for one of the signings of the season with yeah, the amount of clean yeah, sheets that definitely. he kept this season. Um, so I think they've got a really good basis. I think they could probably do with shoring up their central midfield area. I like John McGinn as a player, mm. um, but I'm not sure that he's good enough to take them to the next level. No. Um, and marvelous Nakamba, um, is that his? Is it marvelous Nakamba? Yeah, marvelous. Apart from his name being epic, <laughs> I don't think he's a player that's going to take them to the next level either. So I think they would probably need another strong central midfield player to get to go in there, um, especially if they don't keep Ross Barkley. But then yeah. he was deployed more as a winger anyway, wasn't yeah, he for, for yeah. Villa? So. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to get on next year. It's it's difficult to kind of work that out. Yeah, and in terms of their league position, they finished eleventh with sixteen wins, seven draws, and lost fifteen with fifty five points. Yeah, I mean, very safe. I mean, the gap between them and the the teams at the bottom they were ten points ahead of Newcastle in twelve, so they were never in any danger of no. of uh, getting dragged into that relegation scrap, um, which. <laughs> I guess it's one of those seasons when, when they the way they started, maybe the fans will look back and think of a little bit of a missed opportunity. Mm. But at the same time, you, as you say, a bit like West Ham in many ways for missing out in the Champions League. We've still got Europa League. Yeah. But you have to take into account where you've the journey you've where made, you've, you've come from, from is yeah. such a short mm. uh, time frame. Yeah. Um, is incredible. But I mean, maybe Villa will look at what West Ham have done and able to maintain that. And maybe yeah. think, oh, yeah, we could have, we could have done the same. You know, is our squad any worse than West Ham's player for player? It's not that far behind, I would no. argue. Uh, but there, yeah, they just couldn't quite deal with that loss of Grealish. I think it's nice the to see these big the clubs of old though coming back and sort of making a go of the Premier League. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, moving on to Wolves, uh, this is actually their third consecutive Premier League season. Uh, and unfortunately, due to injuries to a few key players, was probably their worst since they returned. Yeah, they've had a very, very poor season by their by their standards. Mm. I mean, they they set their standards very high in their first two seasons, um, and obviously the big injury, as we know, is Raúl Jiménez. Um, I think it was was it November December yeah, time, twenty ninth of November. Yeah, um, I mean, it was. I st- I can literally still hear the the injury, the contact from that. How David Luiz got away without yeah. an injury from that? Um, I've got no idea, but. Yeah, that was that, a did sickening. That not sort of start the whole concussion sub I th- thing. I think it was being talked about anyway, but I sh- I'm pretty sure that would have sped conversations yeah. up. Um, because yeah, that that was a horrific injury. It really was. Yeah, it was horrible. Um, in terms of their cup, again, they were knocked out in the second round of the League Cup by Stoke. Um, Stoke had a good run against the Premier League, <laughs> and the fifth round of the FA Cup by Southampton. Um, what I didn't realise actually was Nuno actually signed a three year contract at the start of the season. Oh, um, so he's had himself a nice little payoff then. Yeah, a day before their first game of the season, which they uh, went on to beat Sheffield two 0 okay. Well, I'd say he pay off. It was mutual consent, so mm. it wouldn't have been the full package for being fired. But I'm sure it would have been a a percentage of whatever he may have yeah. got had he been fired. I wonder what the re- real sort of reason was for him. I don't know. I mean, even... <sighs> how long has he been there? They brought him in in the championship. He got them up at the first attempt. Yeah, so, it's so four, four years, years effectively. Ago. Um, which by today's standards is a fairly long time for managers these days. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe he just maybe he felt like with the way the season had gone and everything that happened, maybe he felt like you know that he'd he'd got them as far as they could go. Maybe he didn't feel like he was capable of going again and or taking them further. Um, 
maybe he just wanted another challenge. You know, yeah. you know, four years at the same club, he's done great things there. Mm. Maybe he feels like the time is right for a new challenge, and there's a lot of managerial opportunities around. Yeah, not yeah, just now's in England. the best time to be looking for a new job. So, um, again, another team with a, an England call up. Connor Cody is almost becoming a bit of a regular now in the England team, although not starting. He no. seems to be. Like the backup centre there, back, doesn't he? Well, there's this, there's this thing about the fact that he can only really be involved in England if they play a back three. Mm. That they don't, no one seems to trust him playing as a as a as a two in a, in a back four. Yeah, um, I like the fact that he's a really good organizer. I think he actually scored. Did he not score for a goal, a goal for England as well? I think he did. He yeah. did, didn't he? Yeah. Um, I like. I do like him. I love the way he organizes, and I, I I would love to see him given more of a chance with England because I don't feel like. Maybe outside of Maguire, who feels like his position is cemented if he's fit, I don't feel like the other centre-back position is nailed on for anybody. No, no. So it would be nice, maybe now is not the time to start experimenting with the Euros, but yeah. after that, it would be nice to see Gareth give one player a run of games and see how they get on. Yeah, I think it will be Stones and Maguire for I think so. the Euros, unless obviously one of them gets an injury. Um, but yeah, it would be good to see. Although he's, I mean, he's getting, he's 28, 29 now, I think Conor Cody's who... He's not like a youngster just coming from. Yeah, and Cody is a very, for me, he's a very old-fashioned centre-back, yeah. very no-nonsense, whereas if Southgate wants a better ball-playing centre-back, then you have to look at John Stones because mm. he is by far, well, I'll say by far, him and Maguire are the two best ball-playing centre-backs. Um, maybe if you are if you know you're going to be up against the cosh a little bit and you need that extra voice and just somebody who's just going to smash it in a rosette if, if yeah. danger occurs, then that's when you turn to someone like Connor Cody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Two big signings for Wolves this season. They signed Fabio Silva from Porto for thirty-five million. Yeah, that didn't work out, did it? Yeah, and uh, well, and Nelson Semedo from Barcelona for thirty million. I was going to say, how do you think they uh, they worked out? They're both Portuguese. Both Portuguese. Yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Just, <laughs> just wanted to clear that up. Um, Is the first one the nineteen-year-old? Yes. Yeah. So he was brought in. I think we touched on this last yeah. week that he was probably brought in as a bit of a protege, yeah. future player, and obviously he was thrust into the scene because of the injury to Raúl Jiménez. Um, and unfortunately for him, he's just not been able to hit the ground running. He's not been able to hit those goals. But I feel like we shouldn't really... Oh, there's a moth flying around in here. <laughs> we shouldn't really criticise him too much because he's very young. So I feel like he needs to be given more time. Mm. Um, Nelson Semedo, I feel he's, he's done okay. I don't think he's set the world alight, but I don't think no, he's done badly. Um, it's hard as a right back, isn't it, to come in and make a massive difference. It's not as easy as a striker. That yeah, sort of come in and... and he was following in fairly big shoes because I know Doherty's done very little since he's gone to Spurs, mm. but while he was at Wolves, he was a very big player for yeah, them. Yeah, he was. Yeah. So they were they were hard shoes to fill. Um, who do you think is going to be managerial? Do they are they are they going to continue? I know we joke about it, but are they going to continue? I think they with will this? go down the Portuguese route. Um, I mean, I'm surprised, I'm surprised. I was going to say, I'm surprised Jose is not going there. Um, yeah, I think all I've seen is them linked with Portuguese managers. I don't think they're going to change it up. They seem to have got this thing nailed down that every player and manager has to be Portuguese. Yeah, it is. It is odd, isn't it? Um, right. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Um, we are. We'll do. Tell you what. We'll do the stat man quickly before we talk, chat about uh, England. Down the stat man. So City became the ninth different English team to reach a European Cup slash Champions League final. But can you name the other eight? Right. Oh my god, you're so ready for this. Right. I love it. Well, there's no quiz tonight, is there? So this, this is this is my quiz. <laughs> right, let's go. United. Yep. Chelsea. Yeah. Arsenal. Yeah. Spurs. Yeah. Liverpool. Did I say Liverpool? Yeah. No, that's right. Um, Aston Villa. Yeah. Nottingham Forest. Yeah. There's one more. Who have I missed? Oh. Can I give him a hint? No. Who have I, who have I missed? <laughs> You can tell him after he does or doesn't get it. Um, I'm pretty sure I've said all of the big six, haven't I? Yeah. Is it, is it, it's an obscure one. Is it an obscure one that's left? Yeah, ish. <laughs> if he doesn't get his first guess, can I give him it? Yeah, yeah, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> well, I feel is really... It yeah. yeah. Nailed it. I was going to be on. like, we just spoke about that. <laughs> I'm very, yeah. I'm very pleased with myself there. Yeah. Um, right, so to finish off, um, we're going to talk quickly about the England provisional squad. Now, I know this is a bit after the fact because it's been a little while since the squad came out. Um, we, in theory, 
<laughs> in theory, to, is it tomorrow? I believe it's tomorrow, it, yeah. Tomorrow we get to find out who gets cut and what the, the final squad is before the first game of the Euros in a week and a bit's time for England anyway. A week and a half's time. Um, so looking, we've got the squad up in front of us here. Um, we've already touched on one or two that we think may not make the cut. Um, from the list we're looking at, we've got to lose seven. Who's Who are the seven that you're losing, do you Who's think? Who's Ben Godfrey? Well, that's probably one of them. Well, I'm, I'm going with the ones that I genuinely have not heard of. So for, go for me, it's it's Ramsdale. Yeah. yeah. Um, Godfrey and White. Yeah. Um, I feel like one of the right backs. I don't think he's going to take um, Bakayo Saka. No. I he's going to yeah, I don't think Saka will go. Mm. Um one of the midfielders, I think. I think on the assumption that Calvin Phillips and Jordan Henderson are both fit, mm. I can see... I think Bellingham. I think Bellingham will drop. It's a shame because I think he's an exciting player and I'd love to see him there. But even if he goes, it'll be like a walk He probably won't mm. play Do you think he'll much. take Ollie Watkins? Yes. Yeah, well, yeah, Watkins will go. I'm a little bit iffy on Jesse Lingard. Uh, oh, I completely you? forgot he was in the list. Mm. Um, yes, I, I too. I, I don't think because of the positions that he's been playing yeah. in. The only thing that works in favour his favour is that Southgate likes him. Yeah. For the same reason with Sterling. Um and he did play very well when he played for England in the two games. He did, uh, yeah. He's had a crack in half a season for West Ham. Um it's just because Southgate said before that he didn't actually want to call him up. It's yeah. only because of injuries. It was a bit of a, a bit of a strange thing for Southgate to say. Yeah. Move, to be honest, but that it? just makes me think maybe he doesn't want to because obviously Lingard's 28 now as well. Do you think Calvert-Lewin will go? Yeah, Calvert-Lewin. Those three strikers will definitely go. Well, who? Um, Kane, Watkins uh, and Calvert-Lewin. Yeah. Those are your three strikers. And then definitely definitely. Think Greenwood goes? Well, yeah, see I... But I would like to see Greenwood go just because he can play on the left, the striker and the right, but he is probably one that would potentially miss out. So hold on, how many you've got Saka? I think we've just dropped about nine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's hard to say a, a we've solid actually seven trimmed because the team. There's, a, there's a few I think uh, it's hard to... I, I personally would take Greenwood. Um, I wouldn't take... I, you know, I'd be tempted to drop James Ward-Prowse. Yeah, so because I don't, I don't think he offers anything that the other players, such as Rice, Phillips, Henderson, if he's fit, Lingard. I don't think he offers anything no. else that they don't. And we've got plenty. Although he's got probably the best free kick, I think we've got a lot of free hey, kick takers. Trippier's free kick. Trippier's can trip yeah. whip a free kick. Um, Team Trippier. <laughs> Team Trippier. Rashford can can it, can it one if yeah, he's feeling yeah. if he's in the mood. He likes the gutter balls, doesn't he? Yeah. So, and I, I would like to see Bellingham go. I really would, but I don't think he's going to go. So I don't know because Southgate likes like the youth approach, doesn't he? So he I does. could see him taking him just because he is so young. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Find out tomorrow. Well, I mean, wh- wh- I asked you to pick a seven. We picked about nine. And we yeah, really got an answer there. But it's hey. tough to pick seven in particular because there's some where I'm like, if they don't go, they won't go. Type thing. Yeah. I think he will take all four right backs. I've got a sneaky I suspicion do, yeah, he will. I feel like yeah, he will I because will. I, I think out of the four, Trent would be the one that gets dropped, but I just don't think he'll drop Trent. No, I don't think he'll want the bad PR. No. Not after the uproar. Of exactly, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think he will, he'll want everything. He's very much team positive, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. He wants everything nice and happy, positive vibes. He yeah. won't want any negativity around the camp. And I think even the players yeah. themselves would want Trent to be there. Yeah, I think so. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I can see him taking all four. I mean, there's a lot of strikers in that list. There's a lot of forward players in that list. I mean, he's got what? There's 11, 12? No, 10, sorry. One, two, three, seven. Yeah, there's 10 forward players in that list. I think you probably could drop three of those. Yeah. Um, and for me, those three are probably uh, Saka, Greenwood. Or oh, actually, maybe do one more. Or is it just those two? Do you, yeah, I was going to say. Gonna say if you, look at, if you look, at the, look at the others, it's Sancho, Watkins, and Grealish. Are the other ones? Mm. You're not going to drop that. Yeah, and you're not going to drop it. You're not going to drop those, are they? The the other ones are dead certs. Rashford, Kane, Foden. They're dead certs to go. Mason so, Mount's dead cert. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, I would give him uproar. Is it his him. first Who? championships? Mason Mount was he at the World Cup? No, no. no. They'd been way too young. Yeah. yeah. Um, we don't forget the World Cup was effectively well. Yeah, I guess three uh, years. Three ago years now, ago, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah so. Of course. Um, right, okay. Um, so we are going to end the show. <laughs> so the forfeit is coming. 
We're going to do it in a moment, but I've been warned that there is a chance that whatever I'm doing might make it difficult for me to end the show, <laughs> which has not made me feel any better about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to end the show now, and then we're going to record it, and it's going to be one of the first videos we're going to whack on our YouTube channel. So when we uh, when we go live with the YouTube channel in a few days' time, do keep an eye, because that's where the forfeit's going to go. We will put links to it, obviously, on our social media and stuff. Um so yeah, you can all have a good laugh at me, whatever I'm about to do. Um, but yeah, I've been warned I won't be able to win the show. So um, next week we will be taking a um, a real deeper look into the Euros and what's what's coming up. Obviously, we'll be what six days or five six days away from the first game for England. Um, we are going to continue as a weekly show. We, we we talked about the possibility of doing more shows, but I think with the amount of football that's going on, I think trying to keep it up with it all and with the you know the amount of stuff that we have to do you know, you know other things we do it's just not feasible so we're going to stick with the weekly show it gives us more to talk about more to more to recap on um and uh, yeah hopefully we'll be we'll be talking about england success we are also actually while I'm on the topic we're going to attempt to do a live stream aren't we yeah mm, yeah we're going to we're going to attempt to do a a youtube stream when we get the youtube channel up and running we're going to attempt to do a live stream Probably for an England game, maybe yeah. for a yes for an England. Game. Okay, all right. Okay. I've, I've been overruled. <laughs> Fran literally won't. I care will have any no input. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to do an England game live stream. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to actually stream the game for obvious copyright reasons. You can um, watch our lovely little faces. But yeah, you can watch along with us. So you can have the game on yourselves and watch along with us and, and get our reactions and feedback. Um, so, right. Okay. Well, on that note, thank you very much for listening, everybody, and we will speak to you all next week. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.